So I'm going to do a lesson on the verbs. Now, in the is I see in the Brihara on quid is tahti in Aberti. So the verb is the most important part of a sentence. Cain fall, why? Well, if we're hain, being on Brihar egtus na Haberta. The verb is at the beginning of the sentence. So whether you're junior cert, whether you're leaving cert, no matter what you're writing, most of the sentences that you structure yourself will begin with a verb. Now, if you have your verbs learnt and if you know your rules for your I'm sure Chacha, your present tense, your I'm sure Lorach, your um, sorry, I'm sure Chacha, past tense, your I'm sure Lorach, present, your I'm sure Oshloch, your future, and the Mokaniloch, the tense that every student hates, which I don't get. I love it. It's, it's in a lovely, 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 lovely tense. Once you get it, okay, and I hope at the end of this lesson um, that you will understand the Mokaniloch and how it works, okay? But that is why verbs are important. They go at the beginning of the sentence. Kuig on Fargadi on Shuppa. The man went to the shop. Kuig. If you have Kuig spelled wrong, then the examiner is going to have a bad impression straight away because you can't even deal with your, your verbs, okay? So if you focus on anything between now and your next set of exams is the verbs. In the shop pictor, right? For your shop pictor, you need verbs. V ahis or angalin. Chuig she er vos timpel nechaharoch. Chonik she, she saw. Or if you choose to do your shopping tour in the present tense, then ta ahis. Tain she timpel nechaharoch. She goes around. Tain. And again, you need to spell the verbs correctly. In your oral exam, kata rinna tu an sarash kata rinna me lan rodi kuig. You need to know your past tense verbs. Inishtam fui do gna la. Tell me about your, your, um, your average day, your ordinary day. Well, I am or hoch the clog agus ehem of Rick Foster, lemma hailoch, um, degena ehem lemma vaher, lemma yad is gokrun machine. So I'm showing you how you can expand your sentences, but the verbs come at the beginning of most of the sentences. Asquelga. So if you think about your sentence structure, Asquelga, VSO, verb, if we're him, subject, if we're do, agus. O objective retreat. Kuig conic on far on van. Who saw the woman? The man. He's the subject of the verb conic on far. What did he see? The woman on van. She is the object. So that's your, that's struch thor na habrita asquilga. So that's why your verbs are incredibly important. And you can pass, you can get through your exams if you have your verbs correct. Okay, the rest of it will come, but I would advise you focus on the verbs. Okay, so Shaidna Noti Tadenta Machigom is Tom Khan Dull Treat Nanoti Matasha Shinkakalor. So the verbs, right? Now most of this is going to be in English because I want you guys to understand the rules of the verbs and how the verbs work. Okay. Now beg me a buntu side as piece of your guelga ire on each shine. I will use a little bit of guelga, freshen, con the termi grammadi of unadi of to teach you the grammatical terms. But last mud the shin beg fervor on kyachta tri van on verla. Okay, so the verbs nebrihara, on briher, singular nebrihara, plural, on versus ne. You've two types of verbs in Irish. You've regular verbs and you've irregular verbs. Now, if you look at my Instagram, crack la guelga, okay, you will see a post on verbs. So you might maybe keep an eye on that. Regular verbs, we love them because they follow the rules, okay? This whole lesson is going to deal with the regular verbs. So everything we see today is for regular verbs. The irregular verbs, I love them. You may hate them, but there's only 11 of them, okay? Ma trashiv eg denev stader er en vrankish. French, you have hundreds of irregular verbs. Irish, when you have 11. Yet they're the verbs the students mix up a lot of the time. Okay, so just be gikor machlishin. So when dealing with ver regular verbs in Irish, you need to know that there are two groups. Group one is the cade renu. They have one syllable. Doom. 
brish. And then group two is the Dara Renu, the second conjugation of verbs. And um, the majority of them are two syllable verbs. Now, to get more detail on that, if you look in any of your Irish textbooks, you will see a bit more on two of those groups. But this is just the basics of the verbs, okay? If a verb has one syllable, it has different endings in the different tenses than verbs with two syllables. So verbs at one syllable being dairy, Diffrula, Egna, Brihara, Shin, they have different endings than the verbs with two syllables. That's why it's very important that you know where the verbs are coming from. Okay, so Dune, how many syllables? One syllable, right? Is a broad or slender? D U father N. The broad vowels are A O U, so it's a broad verb. So if I'm putting that in the I'm sure Lahoruch, the present tense, and I want to say may. Right, so it's the first group of verbs, one syllable, so it means it's the ending A-I-M, dunam, because it's one syllable, it's broad, and it's the may line. These are the questions you need to ask yourself throughout when you're using the verbs. Is it one syllable? Is it two syllables? Which tense is it in? Do I have the correct ending at the end of my verb? If you do not ask yourself these questions, you will not get the verbs right, okay? And a lot of the time, the mistakes are... For example, dune, do you father n, putting maybe the ending i m at the end of it when that can't be right because dune im. If I can type it here, maybe dune is a broad verb. If I put i m here, then you have u and i coming together. You can't have that in Irish. So then you put in your a, dune im. So just be gi cormach lesh na rodi marshin. Also, if the verbs are broad and slender, the endings are different. So is it a broad verb? Is it a slender verb? Remember, lahan, lahan, quail, quail, broad or broad, slender or slender. So let's look at the rules for the regular verbs. OK, um, I'm going to fly through this video, but Egon Dera is fair to live a uh, usoid reach. You can use the video again and again and again and again. So rules for the regular verbs for questions and for negatives. So do you like sport? No, I don't like sport. Question and negative. In the Aimsha Kacha, you use air plus a shevu and near plus a shevu. Only in the Aimsha Kacha. Then in the present, future, and Mokni look, you use an plus aru and ni plus shevu. So, how I learned that is it's a song, right? But it will work. So, do you ever hear of, um, do you ever watch Cheap About a Dozen and you have the song? Do you know, once was a man named Michael Finnegan and had some whiskers on it? Do you know what? So, that's the song, right? So, Er and near plus shevu san, I'm sure Katcha on a nice and I'm sure Ella Larok Oshnok Moka Niluk. That's my song, right? That's 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 how I learn it. So again, it's important to know that, right? If you're asking a question or if you're giving a negative, you need to know which um which word you use to do that. Now let's go on to the I'm sure Laura of the present tense. So in the present tense, we use the same line of the verb for. Like it's that easy. Tu she, she, shiv, she it. Shiv is ye, she it is they. We use the same line of the verb for all of those um all of those pronouns. Tu she, she, shiv, she it. May has its own line, and we, shin, we has its own line. That's it. So essentially for the present tense, you're learning three lines of the verb. So I'm sure Laura, think of three, right? You're learning the three lines of the verb. Remember the may ending as part of the verb. Dunim has the may as part of the verb. So let's just have a look at that. Now we're looking at the cade rem new verbs. Remember those verbs are the ones with one syllable. So these are lahend or broad. Look, you have dunim, dunin, tu, she, she, shiv, shid. That this is the line for all of those pronouns. Then dunamid. Again, so we have three lines in the I'm sure Laura. Now, so I'm just going to skip on, right, because you can see it. Let's look at what happens when you deal with a quail verb. So for dunum, we had AIM. For brisham, because it's slender, the A is removed to make the ending slender. Do you see that? Then brishan. So for dune, for the broad verb, it was ANN. But here an E is added to make the ending slender. And then for Brishamid, we take out the A to make the ending slender. So if we're dealing with a broad verb, the endings have to be broad. If we're dealing with a slender verb, the endings have to be slender. 
Okay, so just bigi kormach leshna rodi marshin. Then on dara rain new two syllables. Canig. A I G H is a broad verb. And I G H is a slender verb. So just learn that. Again, we have the, the three separate lines. Kenium, Kenian, Tu She She Shiv Shid, and Kenyamid. And notice how we go from being broad up here to being slender down here for Balig. So for the present tense, for the regular verbs, if you learn the four sets of endings, you're sorted. Okay, now feel free to pause this video and take it down, right? But I'm going to move on to the I'm sure Oshnuk next. Okay, so in contrast with the present tense, now we're moving on to the future tense. The future tense, we use the same line of the verb for me to she she shiv she is. Okay, so again we've only two lines here. Dun hig me, dun hig tu she she, dun hamid, dun hig shiv, dun hig she is. So we have to learn two lines of the verb because this line, um, the may line, will do all of those. So in contrast with the present tense, in the future tense, the may is not part of the verb, right? We say dun hig me, you might see it here. So I've done out here for you. These are the kade re nu, broad and slender. The dara re nu, two syllables, broad and slender. So I'm going to move on. And then we have the we line of the verb is different, right? So the we line of the verb in Yom Shalorach is lina difrul a. It is a different line, right? Mar ta ta ending difrul aguin don Marie Hershin. We have a different ending. So fiamid, right? Or famid. So dun dun famid. We will close. Brishamid. We will break. Then canoamid, we will buy. Um, Baloamid, we will collect. Look at the different endings, right? So this is why you need to ask yourself, right? Which group is the verb in? Create your little checklist. Now I have a little checklist done out for you at the end of this lesson, right? When you use a verb, you need to ask yourself these questions and tick it off as you're going along your checklist. So with the I'm sure oh, Shnuk, we've only two lines to learn, okay? So feel free to pause and take down as we're going along. With the Aimsha Kachin, now the reason I'm doing the Aimsha Kachin and the Mokniluk together is they're very similar. Mokniluk changes in some in some ways that the Aimsha Kachin does. For example, the Mokniluk keeps the H. We'll talk about that as we go along, okay? So the Aimsha Kachin, we use the same line of the verb for me to she, she, shiv, she. So similar to the future tense. We only have two lines to learn here. I mean, wow. Okay, so similar to the I'm sure Oshnuk. So this is why I chose to do the tenses in this form. Present, future, past, Mokniluch, because they all continue on from each other. Okay, they're all taking some characteristics from each other and using them. So we have two lines again, so in the I'm sure Kacha. Um, what other tense is the same? Well, I just answered it for you, but you might think about that. So we had a shevu, goon me, so we're putting in a h here. Goon me. D apostrophe before a vowel. D apostrophe before an f and a h. Air for a shevu, near per, um, air plus shevu, sorry, air plus shevu for a question, near plus shevu for a negative. Think of to the, um, back to the start of the lesson. How to ask a question, how to give a negative. Now this one I find very useful. R is equal to D. So if you remember R is equal to D in the past tense, when you have near or an er or any of the other um, words that we can put before verbs in the past tense, if they end in R, you drop the D. So it's not near dogme, near augme. Okay, and then this is an example then of verbs in the first remnu and in the second remnu. So you might notice here, goon, may, we put in the H, and then goon and mar, look at the ending for the wee line. So again, we have the same line for me to she she shiv sheed in the past tense, which is great. I mean, how amazing is that, right? We only have to learn two lines. And then we only have a different line for the we line, which is similar to which tense I asked a while ago, and I'm sure, oshtanach, exactly. And then look at the difference between the endings, right? So you add in an e here to make it slender. You take out a here to make it slender. Right, you might notice um, a similarity between the patterns 
of this and the present tense. So you might maybe have a look at that yourselves. Now we're moving on to the more kneeloch, right? The more kneeloch then is the wood tense. So I would close the door. What would you do if you won the lotto? Had a yen for the move for and crank or not shunta. And if you can use the more kneeloch correctly, it impresses the examiners, okay? There's nothing worse than students being like, I hate the more kneeloch. Yeah, you hate it because you haven't learned it. You hate it because you haven't studied it. Sometimes I think we can have this attitude, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that. But if you work on it and when you understand it, you actually um, get to like it and you, you'll be able to use it that bit more, which is very impressive. OK, so similar to the Amshakacha. How is it similar to the Amshakacha? Well, we have a shevu in the Mokinilach, right, at the beginning of the verbs, goon hing, you see it here. We put a D before a vowel and we put the D apostrophe before an F and we put in a H after that dog hing. I would leave. However, in the Mokini look, think back to the beginning of the lesson, we use an plus aru for a question and ni plus shevu for a negative. It's just bigi kormok lishin. Now, with the Mokini look, right, the me to shin and shiid is part of the verb. So you don't actually use the word me in the Mokini look, you say goon hing. The me is implied, it is joined fused with that part of the verb so if you look at this verb here goon hing i would close the may is part of the verb already so the four of these are part of the verb in the mokinilach and that is probably the trickiest thing when it comes to on on mokinilach let's just keep an eye on that now i have the endings done for you as well so in the Mokinilok, we use an plus aru for a question and ni plus shevu for a negative. And we drop the D in the question in the negative form of the verb. So ni olhing, I wouldn't drink. Ni olhing on te, I wouldn't drink the tea. No D. This is the checklist. How many syllables are in the verb? Is it lahen or quail? Is it regular or irregular? Have I used the correct ending? Have I done all the changes necessary in this tense? Before you attempt to use a breher, you need to ask yourself these questions. And the more you ask yourself these questions, the less you will have to ask because you do it naturally. Whereas now you need the checklist to make sure you're using the verbs correctly. And after a while, you'll become less dependent on that checklist. Now, these are the endings, Mokniluk. So the Kedrem new, you'll notice the we and the you, look, they're part of the verb. The, the we, I'm sorry, the, the me and the you are part of the verb here. Then you notice the we is part of the verb and the she is, is part of the verb. So the endings on top are the Kedrim new one syllable verbs. These are the two syllable verbs. So again, feel free to pause the video and take it down. Um, then you have the Uru, just to remind you of the Uru, okay? So feel free to pause the video, as I said. August is the live Asian is free of she is. And I'm sure catch it in. So we have D before a vowel, H with a consonant, so we put in a shevu, and D plus H with F, er and near plus shevu. We've gone through this already. So that's the Yamshakacha. So again, we, we just put in the H, and then for the we line in the Yamshakacha, we have these endings here. These two are the one syllable verbs, and the two over here are the two syllable verbs. Then we have the present tense. Look at the endings, right? So pause the video again and take it down. And then you have the future tense. So remember the future tense is very similar to which tense? The I'm sure catch it because you've only two lines to learn because the may to she, she, shiv, shiid are the same line. And some of you are probably like, wow, any of the new verbs were actually that simple, but they are. In the Brihar Realta, the regular verbs, they are honestly this easy. OK, then I'm going to leave you with this. These are the irregular verbs and this is how I learned them. A, B, B, C, D, F, F, I, T, T, T. And those are the irregular ones. They don't follow the rules, which we will deal with in another video. So, Gurv Mila Mahagwiv, Tosula Gungar Aulum Shiv Rodeg, and I hope you learned something from this video, I guess. Um, so, our Instagram, I have a page called Crack Le Guelga, um, and I post up on it every single day. There's quizzes, grammar quizzes mainly, and there's notes going up around the Hanach, around Gunta Scott Law. So check it out. Okay, Gurmila, Sloan Liv.